Today we're going to be playing with wood and electricity. What could possibly go wrong? This is just a scrap piece of plywood I've had lying around the shop. It's pine plywood, uh, three quarters of an inch thick. There we go. The first cut chipped out, but uh, the second one looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and free this. What we're doing today is called electroforming. What we want to do is we want to put a layer of copper on the outside of a non-copper object. I personally bought a kit to do this. Um, I tried this a long time ago on my channel and I wasn't successful. Um, it's nice to have all the pieces here in front of me and to just be able to do it from start to finish and without accumulating them. Uh, now that I've gone through the steps a number of times, it's actually fairly simple and I think you can accumulate the parts without going and buying a kit. I, I don't know, for the ease of it, it was, it's wor it was worth it to me to, to get the kit. Uh, you will see that I added a copper ring here to the top. All right, first thing we need to do is add a coat of finish. I like spray lacquer because it dries fast and I can put in two coats in about 30 minutes. So we'll let that dry for about 20 minutes and then we'll put on a second coat. Once the lacquer dries, we move on to conductive paint, and it is just what it sounds like. It is paint that carries an electrical current. It actually goes on really quickly because of how thin it is. And it's nice with the wood too, not as delicate as the um, leaf is. Now I've got conductive paint on me. The whole point of this was to hold it in place, but a little hoop is spinning, so. Okay, so here's what it looks like once the conductive paint has dried. But what this really signifies is that we have finished all of the prep work for electroforming and we can actually start putting copper plate on here. We're going to make a circuit. We've got a plastic cup with a copper coil in it. And then what we add to that is this electroforming solution. Uh, copper sulfate, sulfuric acid, distilled water. Let's go ahead and pour it into our container. The other half of the circuit is simply this small piece of copper wire with a hook on the end of it. And since we have completely coated this object in conductive paint, we just hook it on the end. And that's all there is to it. Now, this would totally work if you had an object that didn't float in liquid. This is incredibly light, um, and so it'll totally float. So for those type of objects, I've made a weight. It's very simple. It's a hex nut with a wire wrapped around it, spray painted heavily with latex paint. Okay, so the kit that I bought actually came with a power supply, and this supplies one amp or less. And I was reading all these different formulas on calculating surface volume and everything else. For me, I have found that a lower amperage, even if it takes longer, gives you more detail in a piece. I've basically been going with this sort of um, 0 0.20 amps. I think it's called milliamps, 20 milliamps. Uh, and that's the setting I've been going with for most of the things that I've been plating. It takes a while, it takes a number of hours to get a, a solid plate, but when you're done you get a really good detail. Now for something like this, for a piece of wood that's really solid, I bet it doesn't make a huge difference. So the red goes to our copper coil, and the black goes to the 
object that we are electroforming and press start look at that it even gives you a cute little animation so particles of copper are flowing from the anode and the solution we're going to be forming them on our object as you can see here it's the copper wire going down that's our hoop that we added and this is the wood already starting to have copper form on it so within I'd say five five minutes uh, the process has already begun All right, here it is outside of its bath. It has spent, I think, eight hours in there. It's got a really cool look to it. I would like to retain the super high, um, bright copper. And the easiest way to do that is to simply give it a coat of finish. Is there a more humble shop material than a plywood cast off that is now a piece of jewelry and not only a piece of jewelry a piece of really pretty jewelry if i do say so myself in the video i went back and forth and called the process electroforming and electroplating there is a difference and i have found that out electroforming is going through this process and adding metal to a non-metallic object and electroplating is adding metal to a metallic object. So that apparently is the difference between electroforming and electroplating. The question will be asked, is this something you can do with resin? The answer is absolutely. This is fast cast resin poured into a flamingo mold covered with conductive paint and then electroformed in the copper solution. And as you are all aware of my rather unorthodox proclivities, I will share with you another of my unusual electroforming objects. This is a packing peanut that was keeping the kit safe on its way to my workshop. The rest of his friends were thrown away, but I have made this packing peanut an immortal copper shell. It has also started to oxidize. You can see some of the blue forming in different parts of it. This was done probably three, maybe three weeks ago now. I understand the process. I understand how it works, but it still feels like borderline alchemy. So at the end of the day, we took a scrap piece of plywood, a relatively worthless object, and gave it some value. And on top of all of that, it was fun. I would love your suggestions on how I can use this for future projects. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.